So yes, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, social engineering and physical pen tests. This is the once upon a time in a physical pen test kind of talk. I, uh, from this point on, I will apologize for uh, stuttering. <laughs> I am, uh, although I have been living here in the U.S. for the past year, I still am not. I'm still am not 100% on the language. Uh, my original language is my mother language is a port, uh, Portuguese from Brazil, Brazilian Portuguese to be specific. Uh, no, it is not Spanish. We do not speak Spanish in Brazil. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I am Marina Chavada, uh, and I am a journalist by <laughs> degree. I have my degree, uh, my first degree in journalism. Uh, and from journalism, I jumped to events organizing uh, back in Brazil. I used to organize a lot of hacking and, and infosec uh, conferences. I think I've organized more than 200 or nearly 300 ones around the entire country. It was a lot of events. Uh, and because of that, I got to know a lot of people uh, from the hacking scene and the infosec scene as well from Brazil. Uh, so I became a community manager as well, and I was also the leader of a huge volunteer team with more than 1,500 people. Uh, so it was fun. <laughs> uh, and because all of that, I had, uh, you know, I had close, close contact with a lot of people uh, giving the talks and, you know, creating the content that would go and uh, be presented on these conferences uh, and all the communities and, you know, so I got to learn about social engineering. So I already had all this, you know, human abilities in me because of journalism, because of community management, uh, because of events organizing. And then um, I was already in love with hacking. I will tell a little bit about that in just a few seconds. But uh, to me, that love really expanded uh, when my when one of the people that I've met in an event, I think y'all may know Mark Rogers, he told me that um, hacking was supposed to be uh, whatever you wanted it to be in your own life. Uh, so if you you know if you have it as a lifestyle is if you have it as a, if, if you have it as a mentality, uh, you should be calling yourself a hacker. And that's when I was like, okay, then I, I guess I'm a hacker now because I really enjoy social engineering. I really like the subject, and I was I was start I started to studying uh, quite a bit. And from there, I went to awareness uh, campaigns. I I you know built a lot of cap uh, awareness campaigns for a bunch of companies. Uh, and I'm also now a content producer in social media. So if you go at Marina Chavada, just as my name is written here on the screen, you can find me talking about social engineering and hacking and information security. Uh, so uh, yeah, hacking esports right there on the in the chat in the. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the picture. Thank you, Bryson, for the unicorn picture. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, hacking esports is also something I host. Uh, if you don't know it, it's a live CTF that happens on Twitch every month, uh, and it's pretty cool. You can see us talking about CTF and narrating a live match, uh, just like an eSport. But anyway, uh, I'm also head of my own company. You, you, I think you got the picture. Whatever. <laughs> so this part here, this is what spoke really loud to me. Um, what was the Twitch that I just mentioned, is hacking esports, just as someone wrote it uh, up there. Uh, so y'all maybe know the Hacker Manifesto. I took a very long while to get to know it, but once I, I took a gander at it, uh, this part right here just spoke very loudly to me. And you gotta, uh, you gotta I'm not technical at all, so you gotta think like when uh, I, I was a journalist, I was a content producer, community manager, I was, you know, um, already struggling with the hacker word, and this just came very strongly to me. I just, uh, you know, read the manifesto and I was like, "That is it. This is social engineering. This is what I like. This is what I want. This is what I want to do for a profession." Uh, which is, you know, my crime is that of curiosity, uh, little piece, and that starts our quest on physical pen testing in social engineering for little Marina back in Brazil. So. Just as Jason Street also does in his talks, whenever he's gonna start start talking about social engineering, 
Uh, it is a subject that still a lot of people hear what we do and they're like, oh my God, that's just mean to do with people. So please, <laughs> whenever you feel like, uh, oh my God, Marina is such a bad person. Please remember the cute little Brazilian animals, uh, the cute little Brazilian, <laughs> you know, puppers. Uh, and remember that I'm doing all the stuff that I'm going to describe today, uh, you know, for a report, for a final report. So people can actually learn to be safer and to be more secure in what they do and how they, li they live their lives. I talked about being a uh, content producer. I also teach the final users around the world, uh, like your family or your friends. I teach those people about security as well, about their own security. Yes, I have that kind of patience. <laughs> so just remember that whenever, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to say something that is, that's going to be kind of uh, problematic. <laughs> um, Marina, you're gonna left. You're gonna tell the story about exploiting the poor guard with your heavy books. Uh, yeah, maybe, probably, yes. <laughs> so yes, uh, social engineer. Uh, if you don't know what a social engineer is, uh, it's you know, it's a we also call a social engineer a human hacker. Uh, we go for the human error. So we are there to take advantage of people making mistakes or inducing them to make mistakes so we can uh, take uh, take advantage of that. Uh, so, you know, as a lot of people talk about you know, the human error as we, you know, we lay around and expect someone to make a mistake. But a lot of us actually are the source of that mistake as well. So you can call it like a manipulation techniques. I don't kind of like that uh, description, but I guess it is what it is. This is easy for people to understand. So uh, we go to, you know, uh, psychology and so uh, sociology and behavior analysis to explore the human responses, you know, to explore the commands that people will uh, respond to. Uh, therefore, we study the human behavior to better approach people so we can have access to stuff we shouldn't. Uh, and that's what I do. I started doing uh, physical pen tests a few a few years ago, like four or five years ago. I don't remember. I don't remember anymore. Uh, but it was out of nowhere. A friend of mine that uh, was, uh, you know, building this social uh, social engineering awareness platform uh, got this really big client, and the client wanted a physical pen test. And this poor friend of mine, he was also very overworked. And not at all a people's person. <laughs> there was a reason why he was working with a computer. Uh, so he asked for help. And knowing that I was really good with people because of all the events and community management, uh, I went there with my first uh, with the client, and I helped him in a physical, uh, you know, assessment uh, in a physical pen test. And it was just a blast. <laughs> The client was very happy at the end. I was very happy at the end. The company was very happy at the end. At, at the end, it was everyone was like super, uh, super um, excited uh, because I did a bunch of crazy stuff. It was my first assignment. I had never done or uh, read about or studied or even know it existed. You know, physical pen testing. So I did a bunch of stuff that you're not supposed to do when you're, you know, doing it day to day not because it was against uh you know ethics it was nothing unethical but because it was dangerous for myself <laughs> and nowadays i don't do a bunch of that stuff that i should have not, i should not have done uh so i got a few techniques here that i usually use a lot in the um, physical pen test that i uh, used to do in back in brazil uh, i'm not doing it since the pandemic of course uh, but uh, I used to do a lot of tailgating, a lot of tailgating. You cannot believe the places you can get with just tailgating. I mean, it is, I know it's very obvious. I know we've been talking about this for ages now, but just just to illustrate here, I got uh, one of my, uh, my most like uh, paranoid clients. They gave me a lot of warnings like, um, it was one of my, one of my, I think it was my second or third client. I can't even remember, but it was 
we're in the beginning. Uh, and they were very, very, you know, high alert. Like, uh, we're going to have uh, the president of the company. It's going to be in the build. He's going to be in the building. And he has a lot of uh, personal guards with him. And we cannot control of the what that guards are going to do. So you got to be very careful. And we got a, a bunch of stuff in place, like cameras all around the building and, uh, you know, access and whatever, uh, and access points, uh, controls and whatever. And the client just gave me like all of this, uh, you know, scary talk. And I was like, damn, I don't, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm getting into. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, scared for myself, but I went anyway. And this was a client that took me 10 minutes to sit on the president's chair. <laughs> and it was a hundred percent tailgating y'all <laughs> from the street. Uh, to you all the way to the building, it was a hundred percent tailgating. I I came from the street as a complete stranger. I did not have a clone badge. The client didn't pay me to do any rec, uh, recon, so I had you know I barely even looked at the the maps and all. I just did Google Maps. It was very very like unprepared. The client didn't give me any any like time. Uh, it was kind of a blind test, almost. Uh, it wasn't a blind test because, 100% uh, a blind test, because I already knew someone from the building. Uh, but it was almost there. Uh, and I went from the street uh, inside the parking lot, and there was, you know, this big gate that people would badge in. And I just waited for someone to badge in, and I, you know, tailgated the, tailgated the gate. Uh, and once I was inside the parking lot, I did had a, a, a fake badge. I just went on, you know, Google and typed the name of the company plus badge, and I found um, a provider. Actually, th this company did not have a lot of people, uh, you know, posting badges on social media. But the provider, the person who, the the company that did the badges for them they posted it <laughs> and that's how i got the fake badge so i you know printed a fake badge and uh i you know uh from the street to the parking lot and on the parking lot it had the, the it was a big, big big building i had already seen on google maps that they had this uh this you know service entry on uh, entrance on the side of the damn on the side of the building there you go I don't know if I can curse. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I learned English with sitcoms and shows, so cursing happens. And uh, on the side of the building and the 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 service enter entrance, the service entrance was also you know badge in kind of situation. So I just waited again for someone to badge in, and I went uh, you know to the service entrance. The service entrance had no extra uh, control um, access control. So I was able to just um, climb the stairs, you know, walk, walk up through the stairs, uh, the fire escape stairs. It was not a fire escape because it, it was inside the building. Back in Brazil, the, the fire escapes, the fire stairs, they're usually inside the building and not outside. I know, not very smart. Uh, but yes, I went up through the stairs, the service stairs. And once I was in the top uh, floor, which, you know, I judged it was the president floor. Um, I just waited for someone to badge out from the floor. It took like two minutes of me just pretending I was looking at something at my phone. And once, some, and once someone did, um, I just walked inside and got it right. It was the president's floor because, you know, rooftop uh, floor. And it took me a couple of minutes to find out where the the room was because you know big room like aquarium kind of room uh and i just it was empty pretty much almost no one in the floor i just walked in the room and i was like okay i guess i'm gonna sit in the director's chair and i did all his stuff on the table you know i took a few pictures and all and send the videos to the security uh, team that had hired me and the security team was like what how is it's been like 15 minutes since you started and I'm like well yeah I'm already sitting in a president's chair they were like oh my what what did, why have you done to go there I'm like I tailgated like three doors 
Emma and I'm here. <laughs> and that was it. So yeah, tailgating, very bad, very, very bad. Uh, still, still works wonders. Uh, services, entries, or stairs, as I said, you know, just gave you the, this example. Most of them have absolutely no cameras, no one watching. Uh, in Brazil, uh, also, very few of them have any uh, access control, like badges or biometry or anything. Very few of them have that. So if you get to the surface entries or stairs, you're in. And you may be sitting on the Christmas chair in just a couple of minutes. Um, so fake reception email. This one is also one that it, it sounds pretty obvious, but it works wonders as well. Uh, what I do is I walk up to the reception and usually the reception uh, give you, they just give you the email of the reception. If they don't, uh, you may find it in the, in the website of the company. And if you don't, uh, some of the receptions have the email printed in like on a, on a, you know, on the wall or something. Uh, and if none of those, those cases uh, are true, you can just insist for one or two minutes with the set, with a sob story to the receptionist and you may have the, the reception email. Uh, you know, oh my God, I'm here for a meeting and I'm late. And the did you did you see any email? You know, letting me go, uh, letting me go inside. Did did did, did the person X sent you the email letting me go inside? And the receptionist will look at the, at their computer and say like, no. And you go, oh my God, I can't believe this. It's already like the third time it happens, and you step away. And in five minutes, you can put up a fake Gmail account, you know, just a new a new, a new email account, a Gmail account, for example. Uh, Gmail is, you know, a trustworthy provider. So people look at Gmail and they're like, oh, okay, I know this one. Um, so you can just set an email up, an email up real quick. Uh, you can go to Google and, you know, type companylogo.png so you can have a transparent version to put on your email signature you can spend one two minutes on the social media you know like instagram for example and check for the check-ins on the company's address uh, and have a random person's picture just make sure it's not you know the ceo or a very well-known person uh, usually it's very easy to find people do a lot of check-ins in their own companies uh, just so you can have a face on your face on your on your fake email and there you go you're good to go uh, you you send a face a, fa a false email uh, for the reception like oh yeah this person will get there at this point in time and please let them come in I'm waiting for them this is very important or whatever you send this false email to the reception and in you go, uh, <laughs> and there, that there, there it is. Uh, people from the reception are, are not usually usually trained to check uh, the uh, what is after the at on the email, so they almost never check if it's actually a legit uh, a legit email from from the inside of the company. And there you go, you're you're in. This is ha this has happened for more than more than I can count actually I can't count how many times I've used this technique to get inside and it worked so yeah a fake badge we all know this trick right uh, you go for either social media or you go mainly social media <laughs> or Google just you know Google in general and you type the name of the company plus badge or you just hashtag name of the company or hashtag badge uh, and you can find a lot of badges I have this you know very filled uh, this this uh, folder on my computer filled with pictures not actually a folder on my computer but let's say a folder on my computer filled filled with pictures and prints that I take from people on LinkedIn for example that every time they get a new job they post a badge there so I have a lot just in case I need <laughs> uh, so I put here OSINT because sometimes the company do have a uh, you know a policy against posting their badges online but 
there's always someone that don't obey that. And if you if, if they do, I already told you a case where the the provider, the company that actually did that produced the 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 badges was the weakest link and they posted it and I got I got it from them. And it was not hard to find. It was like on page two on Google. So, you know, uh, not they they have the no badge policy, but probably there's no one checking if there's actually people posting it or not. Uh, and you know, from social engineering, you can um, usually what we what you can do for the fake email uh, example that I gave you, you know, creating a conflict uh, or creating a problem, and you know, almost immediately solving that problem for the person. So, oh, I know, you know, I, I'm gonna have to do this thing, but uh, you're, you're gonna have to do this huge thing for me, but don't worry, I have this other thing for you that you will, it, it will make it easier. Uh, so, yes, <laughs> usually the fake me email is a good one. Like you, you get very agitated with the reception. They, you know, people feel what you feel most of the times. There is always a very good level of empathy going on uh, with human to human. No matter how empathetic you are, there's always some basic level, unless you're, you know, a psychopath or a sociopath. Sociopath, but usually it works pretty fine. Uh, if you rattle them, if you get them hyped, uh, they will feel like, oh my god, I didn't have this task before, or oh my, oh my god, I didn't have this problem before. But if you take a deep breath and talk to the person, look at the person, you know what? Don't worry, I'm not gonna burden burden you with this. I am, I'm gonna work a miracle. I, I got this, I got you, don't worry. Just, you know, give me give me the access to the Wi-Fi and in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe 20 tops, I can solve that. And you won't have to, to, to worry with that. There you go. You have the, you have the password that you needed or you had the access that you needed. Um, this, it that, that was a real example. <laughs> Um, you can also, you should also uh, impro improv. I know a lot of people say don't improv, do your homework. Yes, do your homework. Do, do, don't you ever go to an assignment, don't you ever go to a mission without your homework well done. Your research, uh, you know, all of your recon if you can, uh, but ultimately stuff that you don't predict will happen especially in brazil that is a poor country and nothing works the way you should someone is always out sick and you didn't predict it or there is like construction or it's there's always something insane going on uh back in brazil and in the middle of the day and you never expected it so you've got to be very very good with the with the with, with your improv uh, a very good example here is um i was in this client it was a very huge media client uh like a TV, like a television thing uh and i was supposed to get uh access to their um, internal like um intranet inter intranet is that the name like the internal system that people use to communicate and put up tasks and all of that uh and i was supposed to get access to that i was like oh my god how am i gonna get access to that and so i went uh for the help desk department on lunchtime lunchtime is usually when everyone leaves uh you know the the intern behind or someone that you know, is in depth with the world. <laughs> so the person stayed behind on lunchtime. Or is someone like overworking, they gotta rush through a deadline. So it's usually not someone that's prepared to deal with anything extra during lunchtime. And that's when you wanna attack. Uh, and I found that person, I found this this dude that was left behind on the desk, on, on the help desk department. And I told him, you know, oh, I have, uh, I'm here from another state and uh, the, you know, the big company sent me, sent me here to check on something that's uh, wrong on the system. It's been uh, on, like, it's 
it's an alert that has been beeping us for a few weeks already and we finally got to you know bring someone here which is me and i'm here to check it so yeah sorry for the delay but we're we're here and we're here to fix it and the, the dude was not entirely having it i felt like it, he was 60 percent there i was like Oh my God, and I have to be quick because I had already two missions that I had to do on lunchtime as well. So I didn't have much time with that dude. I needed him to just buy whatever I said. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to improv on this one. Uh, and I started walking, uh, you know, um, walking on, in circles, very worried and I'm like, uh, do you know where the, the nearest airport is? Because I've not, I've just now noticed that my airplane's gonna fly uh, two, three hours from now, three hours from now. And I have to, you know, uh, get this thing ready and go to the other department and get another thing ready. And I'm just not sure if I can make it. And I gave a very small window of time on purpose because I knew the airport was really far. I would never make there in three hours. <laughs> So the the help desk dude who was like, oh, oh my God, no, you're like, you're, you're in trouble. And I mean, and, and I was like, oh my God, don't, don't say that. I, I really need to fix this. Like it's, it took so long for, for the company to send someone here. And now I'm here and I'm, I'm also going to lose my flight as well and not fix the problem. I can't, I can't let that happen. And um, a person from the technical systems, I think department, it was a weird name. Uh, of the department, but it was right in front of the department that I was. Uh, he were, he heard what I said, uh, all the sob story, and he came to the he came to uh, participate in the conversation as well with the with the help desk dude. And he was like, "Oh, don't worry, I can log in for you." And he logged in on my machine, and he was the sys admin of the internal system. <laughs> So what I did is, while they were discussing the best routes for me to grab my, to to catch my flight, uh, I unplugged my computer from from you know from the uh, the batteries. I unplugged the battery the batteries, uh, and uh, I had my computer purpose purposely on a very slow, um, it was not slow, a very little battery. Um, uh, I had my battery was very low on purpose charge thank you thank you so much uh, very low charge uh, on purpose uh, because I had already tried this before and it almost worked so I was gonna try to do this again and it worked and the sysadmin logged in and I was like okay upload wait for a few minutes and down it went and I was like oh my god oh no I'm gonna run to the other department but I'll be right back uh, to try to solve this. I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for coming here in my aid. And I just grabbed my computer and ran. Uh, and the, <laughs> the session was saved on my computer so I could do whatever I wanted in the internal systems. So yeah, Interprov. You gotta be able to, <laughs> to find your own jewels and just roll with it. Uh, a bunch of things is just simply asking. A lot of people think of this like huge uh, plans and all of that and most of the times you just you just ask a lot of the times back in Brazil this is this is very scary but a lot of the times back in Brazil if I just stand in front of a door that has like a password or badge reading or something like that if I stand there long enough someone will come and open that door for me without me asking I swear <laughs> this is this is not a lie <laughs> it happened like five times already. If I stay there long enough and doing like this and and like this and looking at my phone and worrying myself, there you go. Someone comes in and opens the door for you. And the last one, I love this one. I'm gonna try to run through the stories here. I'm usually gonna take this long with this talk, but it's, since it's in English, I didn't calculate my time right, I guess. I'm just gonna rush through, but this one I really want to say the the did someone called IT because it's the one that I have most fun with, uh, <laughs> which is you just knock on you just knock on someone's door, and ask if someone called IT, and everyone in the entire planet 
at any given time has called IT <laughs> for some you know weird reason for some very dumb reason uh, so if you knock on their door and you can even ask like is the internet kind of slow here today <laughs> it's like it's gonna rain computers on you <laughs> especially in Brazil I had this mission uh, once that it was I had to break into the monitoring room where all you know the video camera uh, the the feed from the security cameras were and uh, it was a very hard room to find. It took me quite a while to find where the room was, uh, but I did. And it was this giant, like, iron door, uh, you know, very solid door with the pad, with cameras on both sides, with, you know, a vacuum chamber in the middle. It was it was a hard place to get in. So I, what I did was like, I don't see any very, very smart way to get into here. and except like knocking on the door and hey did someone called it and i did it it worked <laughs> i got in the, the the monitoring the security monitoring room and the people that were it, it was a security guard and two ladies uh, i don't think the two ladies were supposed to be there but they were there um and i would just started like plugging my usb drive like everywhere and just looking this i'm not i'm not technical just so you know i've like zero technical so i have actually no idea what i'm doing when i'm plugging stuff into places i have i have people to help me with that um you know but i do i do have my my bash bunny and all of that but far from that far from that you know i'm not i'm not a systems hacker but I was plugging my bash bunny everywhere and you know people were not paying any attention they were talking to each other and you know from time to time i would look at a computer unplug the mouse plug the mouse back again <laughs> plug the keyboard plug the keyboard back again doing this face like mm, this is so weird yeah i don't i'm gonna i i I probably have to step out to make a call to my manager. Just give me like five minutes. I'll, I'll be right back. And <laughs> there I go. And then I go away with all the stuff that I that I had in my USB drive. And that is it. I love the I, I love this one. Do someone called IT? Or you ask if the AC is too <laughs> the AC is too cold or something like, or if the printer is jammed or whatever you want. Actually, uh, just have your fun with it. So yes, stealing. Um, I steal a lot of stuff from meeting rooms. Meeting rooms that are unlocked are easy to find or they have the whole schedule on the door. I love that because that means I know when the meeting room is free, uh, is unused, so I can walk inside a meeting room and I have an entire meeting room for myself and that gives me a lot of credibility. I use that to steal information from departments because I pretend I'm someone from you know, another uh, another company or uh, another unit of the company, another campus or whatever, and I'm there, you know, to collect feedback on a new tool or something. And people love to give you feedback. They will, they will go, they will, they will give you a lot of information uh, if you just sit there with them for five minutes and tell them uh, you need feedback. I use a lot of, I, you know, walk around a lot of common areas. Uh, there's the craziest things happening in common areas. Once I caught this entire launching uh, meeting, it was a new product, a very high profile product, and all of the codes were on screen on the common area. I swear. And I, I did not hide to record anything. I literally seated on a beanbag, putting my feet up and had my phone here on my face while they were doing the meeting. Yes, uh, document cabinets. Back in Brazil, it's very common for you to see the document cabinets with the key on the hole. You just leave there with the key on the hole. You know, doesn't secure anything. <laughs> Or the keys are like right on the wall, just hanging on the wall, and you can see the keys. Yeah, uh, unlocked rooms. Just 
you know, jamming the door. Uh, Duocore has very good laugh, laughs with me because I do that to pretty much all doors I can see, especially my family's doors. Every time I go to someone that I, I know, I just try, you know, I just try the knobs to make sure which rooms I can get into. Unlock devices, you know, this is as old as time. Uh, you can do a lot of fun stuff with unlock devices, especially turning the screen up upside down. <laughs> uh, I do steal a lot of uniforms and accessories to, you know, keep on building my, my pretexting once I'm inside. Uh, I have once stolen like six uniforms from just, just one assignment. I finished the day with like the, <laughs> the maintenance, the cleaning crew, the <laughs> the medical, all of the uniforms I just kept like, uh, you know, pulling them out of my of my backpack. Um, fishing, fishing, and smishing. Yes, you can and you should try to always combine those to your assignment. Even if you are on field, this is really helpful if you need someone to open a door for you, uh, or if you need to someone give you access to somewhere and you, you need a password to a lab or something, you combine those, you, you get to know the, that person's number. It's not that hard if you know where they sit, they usually have uh, you know cards or the, if their information is lying around, so you can combine attacks while you are on the field or even before. Uh, about USB, so as you see on the example that I gave, uh, you know, earlier, bat USBs are really fun to have with you. I don't know if I'm like, I'm over my time or not. Please hear in the chat if y'all can just let me know. <laughs> I'm just going to keep talking. Um, and there you go. Uh, for manipulation techniques, I don't like that word, but I'm going to call it like that. Or uh, for... Uh, human behavior, uh, you know, um, assertiveness. I don't know how to say this in English, but for human behavior molding, I, whatever, you can call it manipulation. Finding or causing human error. Uh, so yes, you have to have a very good report building technique. Uh, you can either, you know, make the person feel very close to you super quick or make the person feel uh, safe if you're around, make the person feel happy, you know, tell them a joke or be nice or just be very kind and gentle. It's something that most people are not used to. Their day is going bad. They're stressed. They have stuff to do. So if you're nice, uh, people will help you way faster. There's a lot of people that ask me, in my talks and like in social media media in general. If I'm like pointing a gun to people or if I'm threatening them, oh, you should like, you, you're good at OSINT. So you're gonna get to know like all their dirt and you're, you know, they're gonna do everything you want. Like, don't, don't, please don't do that. That's a, that's a very bad uh, way to build rapport. <laughs> that's no rapport at all. Um, you don't wanna do that because the negative effect last way longer and brings you way more risk than the gentler and kinder and nicer uh, and nicer and happiest approach uh, because people like to be happy and just in life you can see this you remember uh, all the bad stuff right you remember them way easier you criticize yourself harshly you forget to you know um, celebrate the little things in your life, the little, the little conquests, uh, the little victories, and they fall forgotten if something goes wrong on your day because it's frustrating, because it's infuriating, and something can pretty much ruin your entire good day if they're bad enough, which is not much for, you know, the regular person. So because of that, you want the good feeling. You, even, if, even if you hype them, if you hype your target, you want them to feel good at the end. So, you know what? I got you. I'm going to solve this. And, you know, you, you're going to help me. You're going to make this thing work. We're going to make this thing work. And there you go. You, you built a very good report. Um, and divide and conquer lunchtime and after our hours. I kind of talked this about be uh, I kind of talked about this before. Uh, you want people that are, uh, you know, 
by themselves or almost by themselves. You don't want a, a bunch of people. A lot of people can raise a lot of flags. Uh, you want as less people as possible. You want to go and therefore you want to find them at lunchtime or after hours. I do a lot of crazy stuff during after hours. I steal all all the kinds of, of things you can imagine. I have stolen medical exams and, you know, uh, blueprints from the director's department from, uh, you know, from after hours. And, and it's pretty, pretty much anything you can touch inside of the company without raising any alarms. Um, so you got to build credibility. Credibility is super important. Um, it is what will give you most of the accesses. So either you was if you if you're a support, if you are tra if you are a trainee, uh, I do that a lot because I'm a, a white girl, a white little girl. So people tend to not give me enough credit. I I usually can't uh, you know barge in giving orders because that would make me a B. People don't like bossy women, and. Um, they usually just don't take me seriously. And because of that, I take advantage of, you know, support or trainee or junior or someone that needs help or someone that indeed in a support, uh, supporting role. I'm, I'm there to help them and not to boss them around. Uh, but it all depends on your profile, of course, on, you know, how tall you are, your skin color, your voice tone, everything. I have this, you know, uh, this voice tone in English, but my voice is, my voice changes completely. You have to be able to do that with your tone, with your rhythm. You got to be able to, you know, build your, your character. You do, you do your pretexting pretty good. Uh, so usually when I'm talking to people, I'm like, so very cute. And you know, that kind of makes them feel more um, connected to me uh, because they like they like someone that is cute and, you know, it's smiling and all. Um, I also speak the same language. I try to learn as many uh, lingo as I can from the company. So how they call the reports, uh, how they call the team works. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm past my time. You, you are past your time. We were letting you go, but there's only a few minutes before us and the next speaker. So Awesome. So I'm finished. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff. But I was going to talk about awareness, uh, but we all know about that, right? We got to train our people. We all know about that, right? People, right, y'all? Yes, we yep. do. We, we've had uh, we, the talk before you was talking about changing human behaviors. Um, for cyber security, improve cyber security. Um, Nicole Hoffman earlier gave a talk on, which I think should be like mandatory phishing training because uh, it was actually like interesting yes. and well put together. Amazing. Absolutely. So <laughs> that is that is pretty much it. Yes. So I just bought a bunch of a bunch of stories and tales, and that was that was just for us to have fun. <laughs> no, it's super interesting. I think everybody gets a kick out of like physical pen test stories, you know? It's it's super interesting. All right, thank you everyone. And if y'all have any questions, you can find me on the Discord server. And that is it. Sorry for taking so much time. Not at all. Interesting content. Good to see you again, Marina. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.